Okay, Drupal SaaS website. Uh, basic structure, if you haven't seen before. So let's talk. Let's talk about the content. So we have a homepage, basically uh, data reports of past events, which are the views as well, news, and the next event. The next event logic is a bit wacky, so it's a next promoted to the homepage kind of event because we have three events which is meetups uh community day and drupal south they all gonna go uh as they pass so i'll talk about the actual uh content and how to modify it how to make another event on the home page uh, then we have basic pages like about we can edit uh events so events are down to the point where we can create new event and then assign particular pages so i think every content type has an event assignment again once we go through the editing of the event i'm gonna show you how to do different things but if we look at the previous drupal cells which is drupal cells valentine 2023 you can see the structure changes a bit. We have a menu on the left, which is manually controlled. Nothing automatic about that. And we have bits and pieces of um, information here. So about, uh, this is all content. Then we have some views we pulled in. I'll show you how to do the sponsors pulling in. So we have full control of where we structure it. We can move silver sponsors under a blurb of text. So this is all kind of configurable uh, and the order is configurable as well for the content editor so there is again no code is required same goes for the sponsor page so if we need to add specific sponsors to the sponsor page or intro page we actually have to do it separate pages so there is no magic create a sponsor it goes everywhere so that's all controllable by content editors uh recommendation so most of those pages again similar to um, about page so they just content pages they are though have a uh, Drupal South Wellington as the event, the assigned to the event. That's why we see the layout, which is a bit different. Again, most of them are simple content and has to be either populated and researched manually. News, don't think you, like if you would be adding the news again, simple add news committee just another page search and content test okay so that's pretty much structure of the website as you can see as i mentioned before the events are there are three events coming up so drupal south valentine drupal meetups 2023 and drupal community day which is upcoming so let's have a look how we can edit them so if you haven't used platform message before they using so for the stage environment platform sage are uh, using the URLs, which uh, you can't really remember them. So this is an example of the URL for the stage. So it builds together with a bunch of data, uh, but the idea is the same. So now I open it and this is a staging environment. As you can see here, you can see the blurb, the Drupal blurb disappeared. That's a common experience for logging in. There was just too much um, interaction with the admin component so we decided not to do it again basically going through the content if we want to add some news we can go to the content add content article because drupal decided to call news articles and here is our simple publish date so the day that it will appear on the actual uh, thing so it won't affect publishing and publishing Basic content here, tags, 
and your standard uh, standard kind of things here, which is URL alias, which is automatically generated by default. So if I'll create an article saying uh, Drupal sounds and over, publish date yesterday, no event related news, this content goes here. Keep in mind, I am a user one, so I get access to everything. For content editor, there might be a few things I'm missing from this menu. But regardless, they would be able to create a news article. And uh, we can always tweak uh, permissions if needed to. Text testing. So we'll save the article. It automatically goes publish. And it sits in the news. Drupal South handover as the latest news here. Right. So pretty simple to add new news. Same goes for the pages, but we're actually interested in events. So for the events, I, uh, uh, I'll i basically go through the whole process of the event, just explaining things here and there. So as I mentioned before, the homepage, you can see Drupal uh, Cells Community Day uh, here. As a uh, it's a sit as a next event. So if we'll go to this event and click edit on this event, on the bottom on promotion options, there's promoted to the front page. That's at the moment what triggers the events to go to this um, blurb on the home page. And if we untick uh, promoted on the home page and save it, obviously the next event that is promoted, which is either Mirab or nothing is promoted anymore as you can see so the blurb is gone so if we want to promote uh drupal south we go to the events drupal south wellington here edit this particular event go to the bottom of the page promotion options promote to the front page save home nothing yet so that's the funny bit uh, about the promotion. You can only promote events that are in the future. Again, we can change it. It's all good, but that's just something. So if you find yourself with an empty left block on the home page, just know that there might be something that um, triggered it. And usually all the events that are promoted are in the past, so it won't appear here. All right. So this is the issue we're trying to solve at the moment because all the events that are in the future, uh, they uh, uh, they won't appear in the past events. I think we changed that a bit, but we'll double check that as well. So with the home page, yeah, uh, if you're confused a bit, just uh, pin me and I will have a look what's going on in case you, you'll get things disappear. So in case of meetups, again, it's yet another event. We just keep in the list of the meetups here that's happening throughout the year around Australia and New Zealand. Uh, as you can see, this particular one was created. So this is a copy of database from July. Uh, and that's why this event currently in the past. So if I'll change it, for example, for October events. So 1st of October, 30th of October. And on the bottom, I'll go and promote it to the front page. Save, go to home. Now we have Drupal meetups on the front page. Okay. And you can see because it's now in the future, it disappeared from the past events. So this is the only kind of piece of automation that's that's there. And our news article also on the home page as the latest article. So uh, I would recommend to put like once there is a call for papers or you know once maybe two weeks to add the news article here because once people start inquiring about conference, especially ones who are not familiar with the community and they only see Drupal South community as steering committee minutes. Uh, sometimes it's confusing like where the news about the conference although the conference is here 
uh, I would recommend to add, you know, two, three news a month just to kind of keep the interest going, maybe coincide them with a newsletter as well. Okay, so this is the editing existing events. So as you can see on the production, we already have Drupal South Sydney 2024. We don't have on staging because we didn't sync the latest database. So that's a perfect time to show you how to replicate a particular piece of content. So if we go to the events, go to previous Drupal South, which is Valentin, there is a button called replicate. Mm -hmm. uh, and it does replicate this page, but it won't replicate other pages. So the link would be still to the old pages. So we'll go through the structure of the event and we'll modify the uh, pages as we go or replicate and reassign as we go. So I'll click replicate here. The replicate functionality only allows you to change the title. So we'll put Drupal South Sydney 2024. Yeah. Can't copy from here. Let's copy it from here. Okay. Replicate. Here we go. So we have a new page, a new event as well. So the first thing I would do, obviously, change the date. So we are somewhere late March, I think, 20 to 23. When it's 23, it will do. So location is the Masonic Center. So change the location. Right, pretty simple. As you can see, the menu on the left-hand side still have uh, references to the old ones. We'll, we'll tackle them yeah, in a second. Uh, image, if we need to change the image, also a good idea to do that. I don't remember if we added an image to this particular one, but yeah. uh description same thing if you want to copy paste it so the content here is uh, about uh which is uh, I guess the title about would be there. I just put two about for now. So the title is your piece of text. It sits on the top, but later on we're using the paragraphs, which are movable pieces of content. So this piece of content would always sit on the top. So if you want description to be movable as well, you can move it to paragraph, for example. Uh, instead of putting everything here, we can put the blurb about splash award into uh, into the paragraph here so now we have two paragraph source here right so now we split the content from about to the paragraph actual content so we can later on grab this drag handle and move it around so i'll i'll, I'll put sydney 24 as you can see yeah ck editor 4 5 allows us to uh, edit blurbs here but if you're more familiar with html obviously you can go html it's all bootstrap based so all these classes you can see they're not you know um dreamed up by a developer they actually most of them are bootstrap 5 classes you can use and you can bring more of them there that's what makes it like round and particular color and following the color scheme the buttons here schedule uh you can see there is like button secondary button primary button secondary and you can play with the colors so Mr. Five buttons. If you go there and see the examples for Booster Five, it kind of gives you all the colors here. So you can actually go and choose something you want. Uh, obviously, color scheme is different from uh, original Booster, but let's say you want info button, you go back and change award nominees 
to instead of secondary to info and the first button class to info here and you can see the color change to the info color of this particular color schema again uh, if you're not in html that's all fine but i'm sure if you tell developers this is a bootstrap and i want to buttons a bit more greenish i know there is this color schema uh yeah i'm sure that would be able to help you that's kind of a no-brainer or keep the color current color in schema so let us go and promote uh, our, you can see it's already promoted same as a previous drupal south or the previous drupal south in the past so now we have drupal south sydney 2024 so it will appear in the events on mm -hmm. the top here because it's the latest event we created and on the home page as you can see the promoted still meet up and it's not in the past event so that's what i meant by clash uh, of uh, future events so the only thing to do here is go back edit meetups and unpublish oh no wrong one not unpublish unpromoted from the home page so now on the home page we have drupal south sydney 2024 uh, although we still in the past events don't have um, uh, meetups because they're in the future so they're only available through, uh, through the events that's some uh, thing with again trying to fix uh okay so we have an event now we can take care of the left menu here so left menu is um uh, internal linkage so it means you can put a url to remote somewhere it's actually have a description here you can use internal drupal stuff like slash node slash add or you can uh, or you can actually type the name of the page and that's what's gonna uh, bring the new page in for example and as you can see for the titles of the page i like to put the year uh because once you have five award pages and you start typing awards here you will see five award pages i think a good example is tracks so you can see we start naming them drupal south hobart tracks drupal south brisbane tracks drupal south valentine tracks because there were like five pages called tracks 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 so for content editor later when they're trying to look up the piece of content it comes with a bit, kind of very uh, uh yeah it, it's very hard to find it so we can clean up most of the menu that's pretty easy just remove the items as we don't want to i'm going to show you i guess how to clone and add here let's go to about and tracks so here uh, we have about drupal south valentine 2023 we can replicate it and say actually that's that's the actual page isn't it that's the actual event page yeah so we don't need to replicate that because we already did so here's our tracks and you can see once you created the event in the url it's a good idea to follow the same uh, url pattern so i'll show you because by by default it won't follow the same url pattern so here we have events triple south sydney 2024 mm -hmm. but once we re replicate the tracks uh so let's say replicate triple south sydney 2024 tracks here so few things you can see about it here the top banner obviously for the page that's linked to the event it shows the event information right here's a uh, title so we, we need to fix that first uh, then the obviously the content you need to go through the content and modify it. Uh, but let's sort the issue here so we are on uh, tracks for 2024 sydney event is valentin drupal south will change it to sydney event yep 
if you don't need ticket session proposal become a sponsor here at all you can just go and delete it in fact uh, as a paragraph you can actually remove the entire paragraph you can copy it later on once you have more information as well so let's save now we can see the page is saved right and now it actually displays correct event the links are still old links so if you click on tracks it would still go to valentine so we'll fix that in a second and but um the url that i mentioned before the url for the page is drupal south sydney 2024 tracks so if you want to keep the same url and same pattern i would just copy the url events sydney 24 tracks edit this particular page and go to uh, url analysis and check gener generate automatically put it here put tracks save so something nice and clean to keep to keep here so now we have uh, event 2024 the actual link to the event and slash tracks with that tracks again doesn't happen automatically just because yeah it depending on the page if it's relate to the event not relate to the event to add some extra stuff just takes a bit of setting up to do plus you not always want this particular url there. so just something to look after but if you keep the default url i don't think anyone would really notice apart from the crawlers really okay so the tracks again in our left hand side menu uh shows a link to the if uh, same as about it still shows the links to 2023 event so i need to go and edit my drupal south sydney event and clean up the links a bit more so we don't need schedule for now schedule we want to replicate it uh so about which is like a main page from valentine we can start typing sydney here we can see sydney 2024 venue accommodation we didn't create it again i can remove it or add later on same goes for the awards i'll keep the sponsors for now proposals tracks so here we will change to sydney tracks and keep the code of conduct save this event so now we have a trimmed menu about works and goes to sydney 2024 and tracks goes to sydney 24 tracks so that's all sorted um, that's all good that's kind of explains how to control this menu so it's only controlled from uh events as such so now let's go for call for papers as we can see there is no link to call for papers here and uh <clears throat> so there is a web form and web form we can actually embed it in the particular page as well so let's see if we'll find call for papers previous events so drupal south 2023 call for papers as you can see this web form is now closed but we have a page that we used to link to and i think this is a perfect example of go and I can clone it rather than recreate it from scratch. So what I'll do, I'll replicate this particular page. Again, this is just a page. The web form is replicated separately. So I'll replicate it here. Say Drupal South Sydney 2024. Call for papers. And we replicated the page. So this is a new page again same thing goes for the url we can modify the url we need to change the event for call for papers because it was valentine now it's sydney as you can see here one of the blocks is actually selection of uh the particular form we don't have call for papers 2024 form yep so we'll just leave it there uh url that i mentioned before so default is drupal south sydney call for papers we can put events Sydney 2024 CFP, just to follow the protocol and save. Is there a chat message? Oh. Yeah, Nicole just sent yeah. a drop off. Yep, no worries. 
Okay, so we have a Drupal South Sydney 2024. Event is there, but we don't have it in our menu, so we can click about, edit. So we're now on the event page, go to our menu on the left and add papers 2024. So for papers. So we can also here uh, move it somewhere uh, higher. Right here. And save. Okay, so now we have call for papers in our left menu. It is Sydney 2024 20, call for papers. Obviously, we need to go and modify all this information, but this is actually a web form. Excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> the steps are we're replicating the form, we go through each field. We're making sure that there's no reference to Drupal South 2023. There are references to Drupal South 2024. The important bit is the actual emails. The emails are all, uh, they all uh, at the moment disabled, but once you release call for papers, it's a good idea. So I enable two emails, one that goes to the content team, second email that the acknowledgement to the person who can, uh, submitted the email saying, hey, you submitted the email. Again, I'll record the uh, addition to this video, just going through the web form in particular once it's fixed. Okay. Uh, and then once we have our Drupal South 2024 form, we can go to our call for papers page, edit it here, and change the web form from call for papers 2023 to 2024. Again, this form is closed, so we'll actually open the form when we save it. So here, obviously this text again coming from the web form, so we need to modify when the when the call for paper closes. Any details, for example, we had 30 minute session. If you have two formats, maybe you'll, um, you know, 20 and 40 minute session, you might need to modify it here. But yeah, I would recommend you to review before publishing to review um, content and actually ask a couple of people to go and submit the form uh, from, you know, colleagues or anyone. It's a good practice because sometimes, you know, you fixed all the form, you forgot the email or you forgot to turn on email, then you turn on email and it still says Drupal South Wellington 2023. Mm -hmm. So again, I would recommend um, two or three iterations of the thorough testing of the web form. Uh, it's quite a big form, as you can see. So there are speaker details. Uh, uh, there are speaker details. There is session details here. Tracks, again, if tracks would be changed, make sure you modify it. Uh, obviously, you can uh, hide Keynote for now. Keynote, uh, I added, I would actually add the Keynote speakers manually myself into this web form because the submission to this web form would actually uh, end up as a final schedule. Oh, okay. So we'll talk a schedule in a second. So confirmation, admin details, obviously this part is not visible by users, but again, it's good to test. Uh, this is just for us. So we, when we allocate the slot, we can actually go and um, uh, modify it. I can help you you know, uh, jump in and also verify that the form is there. I can even replicate it for you uh, once the production is uh, working. So you won't spend some time just mucking around uh, seeing all the small things. So this is a web form. So just again, a uh, good thorough um, check and extra pair of eyes always helps to go through because it's a large piece of information. As you saw, there are session proposals uh it, it is a view based on what people submitted that's why i like to receive uh i like to receive the uh confirmation email we never had spam submissions uh, but you never know if persons decide to you know go and um, put some nasty stuff in there so it's a good idea to keep an eye on the submission and you know, disable the submission or unpublish the submission in case 
something happens. As you saw, the submissions can be controlled from structure, performs submissions. And this is all submissions to own forms. At the moment, obviously, it's on the contact us form that has contact us information. But if we'll go back in time to here you go. Here's a call for papers from last year, from March 2023. You can see mm -hmm. the submission for call for papers 2023 are coming from here. So we're basically taking taking the views and populating all the submissions because uh, in my opinion, it was a good idea to actually uh, show the proposals so people can see. So that's if it's not closed. Session proposals. Yep. So to good session proposals, there's a quick search, and you can also sort it by track. Obviously, uh, this view needs to be modified if tracks would change. Uh, but again, I can take you specifics once um, call for papers is in. Right. And you can always one of the developers can always go edit the view, pull it apart, and see how it's done. Okay. So this is session proposals. The final schedule, so this is schedule 2023. The final schedule is all uh, plain HTML, right? Because so it's not automatically put together because we have things like registration and tea coffee, which is not a session. Uh, and then we have keynotes, which takes over all three uh, rooms. And then we have the normal things which later I edit and put the YouTube link there. Uh, I created a view to kind of, I created a view to help with uh, generating the schedule. And this view, this view. schedule, session details, session, session HTML export here. So what I did, I basically modified one of the views and the output of that is this bootstrap table kind of HTML you can copy. So by uh, modifying a few items here on views, you can have the session that was submitted and selected. Uh, and uh, copy and paste it into the schedule. So the schedule, uh, another reason why a schedule is uh, manually edited is because uh, we created it mobile friendly. So from here, there's some of information missing. And uh, as you can see, times are here. But if you go into mobile view, here's our iPhone. So here's our iPhone, right? You can see that the sessions are actually mobile friendly and mm -hmm. each session has a time and a room, which you couldn't see in a desktop mode just because we already know the time in the room. But now rooms disappeared and the times appeared. So it's actually quite useful to use it on a mobile device as well. So not very easy to do if it's kind of automatically generated. Mm -hmm. So the last thing about sessions, so let me get out of the mobile view. The last thing about session is if we we'll go to our submissions, so manage structure of form submissions. So the admin section that I show you on the form that's not visible for normal users here. So status, status rejected, confirmed, shortlisted, right? Uh, users don't see that, it's only for us. Track chair, again, uh, track chair are users. So we need to add a new user if they're track chair. Uh, they don't have to have login into the website. We're just using who is a track chair because it basically selects that. So here's the uh, track, uh, the room. We, we need to add the rooms for the particular uh, for the particular event. I'll show you how to do it. 
So as you can see. So as you can see here, the rooms are a bit, you don't know where those rooms came from, which year, which is also a bit of a, uh, yeah, a bit of a struggle. So we can maybe add 2024 or something like that. So not always okay. easy to select the room, but usually they call differently each year. So track one, track two, and main room was last year. Session node is we haven't used that in a while. We still keep submission as what we display rather than can copy it, co co copy it to the node. Media photo again. That was something from very very olden times, and you YouTube link URL obviously it's something that comes further. So only the confirmed session is the one that you saw in this view that I showed before that actually helps to generate the session HTML expert. So here, one of the filters, as you can see here, is submission data status confirmed. Mm -hmm. And that's how I generate the confirmed session rather than reject it and all of that. But this is a job. Once the sessions are confirmed, come here and update all the sessions, create the pre preliminary uh, schedule, and move on with that. So that's something about sessions right so we cannot go into editing uh editing the particular form then i'll show you how track chairs would link and rooms but i think room from the top of my head rooms are content types so yes so room is a content type so if you go to content and filter them by room you can see the rooms uh, also have events assigned. So once you start okay. replicating replicating the room, uh, you can put uh, room one 2024, change the event to Sydney 2024, save it. Here we go. Here's our first room, room one 2024. You can rename them later uh, in order, but for, you know, to start with, you can put room one 2024, room two 2024, make sure content type room so this is how you create the room for this form again not something that you need for call for paper straight away but eventually you would need that so you can create the room there i can't remember how we speak specific users i think inside web form when we edit it once i get access to the web form i'll show you we pick specific users that are track chairs so we can select from them and not have all the list of the users okay. hmm. If you want to add a new user, uh, I mean, you are not an admin, but whoever is Nicole or anything, there's a menu in Drupal called people. And here you can add the user and you can see who are active users are and what sort of roles they have. So we have a role of track chair, content editor and administrator. And I think that should be like, we don't really need a room for new role, but we can modify the permission for existing roles. So for example, mm -hmm. I don't think content editor have as much access as a track chair. At the same time, track chair cannot edit the pages as such. So it needs to be track chair and content editor in case they want to go and modify some other page. And administrator obviously has something that uh, what I have. I'll probably need to blur, blur all these emails. So, OK, so this is call for papers. Uh, I cannot go into the form. What else do we have left? We have, uh, do we still have time? Being uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good till 11. Okay, no worries. Yeah. So I'll spend five minutes talking about sponsors and I think we can wrap it up and uh, I'll do the follow up again once uh, I'll find out what's wrong with the forms. No, sounds good. So the sponsors is the last one we're going to go. So if we'll go to the event at the moment, you can see here it says 2023 diamond sponsor paragraph, right? Diamond sponsors here. So it's a multi-tier process to create a sponsor. First of all, we have a content type called sponsors. So let's have a look at that. Uh, this doesn't have to be changed unless they want a new logo, right? A new blurb. So if we go to the content, session. again, session is something deprecated. We haven't used session content type uh for a while that's been i think from four or five years ago 
Uh, and we're going to sponsor. So as you can see, there are two content types, sponsor and sponsorship tier. Now, sponsor, as I mentioned before, something you usually don't need to replicate. If like last time, Amazie comes in and says, we have a new logo and new blurb, uh, you can come here to a sponsor. And I did it right here because obviously they don't need the old logo, but keep in mind that the links from the previous conferences uh, will be linked to this particular sponsor. So let's say there is a merger and Aqua merge with, with Pantheon and uh, they have a new company they call something. Uh, then you probably need to create a new sponsor, making sure that the Aqua still remains credits for previous conferences, but the new company is here. So first of all, when the new sponsors come in, check if they've been a sponsor before through this list. Uh, there is, as you can see, a fair amount of uh, companies here, and most of them are Drupal related here. If not, then we can obviously go add content, add new sponsor, right? The editing is pretty simple. Title, logo, URL, and about blurb. Very, very simple here. So once we created all the sponsors and check that the sponsors are okay with their logos and their uh, titles. Uh, another thing about logos, make sure they're kind of same proportions. Usually it's a dead end to us sponsor to send the logo with right dimensions. Usually it's up to us to go and edit it a bit. Uh, so they look similar, but you would be judged yourself. So I was, if you look at the 2023 conference, 2023, uh, if you look here, I was trying to make sure that they all relatively the same as you can see, although I think Salsa was a bit more squarish platform was a bit more squarish that would affect the size. So some of them can end up being tiny because obviously the resizing is automated. So you might need to muck around. So as you can see, I can send really wide and really um, sh uh, short logo. That's why they kind of been pushed out. So if I would have a bit more time, I would kind of create an extra padding on top so the icon mm -hmm. kind of sits here and yeah you you'll get like square logos and a bunch yeah. of stuff so make sure they sit together uh, correctly now to sponsorship tier that's something you need to clone so back to the content sponsorship tier let's pick one sponsorship tier clone it uh, so let's say we are working on gold sponsors for 2024. So this is something we need to clone. So 2024, oh, sorry, replicate first. Don't edit the existing one. 2024 gold sponsors. Replicate. Edit it and make sure first we modif obviously modify the event. Sydney. Then we have a list of sponsors. Let's say this time is uh, previous next. Uh, equal, X equals and Acquia, right? So we remove the other ones. We save it here. So we finished it. with the uh, sponsorship tier. Uh, we can modify the order in case the order matters, but now we have sponsorship tier. So we can go back to the conference. So events here, homepage. We can see the sponsors diamond platinum here, but gold are still 2023. So we can actually modify this content. Go to the paragraphs and find where we pull the sponsors. The sponsors pulled through paragraph type called entity reference. And then we type here what sponsor we want. So if we will start from scratch, on the bottom, there would be add block so we would need here to create add entity reference mm -hmm. and here we'll type gold 2024 gold that's all we need to do this is classes again was added something long time before i don't think we're using any of them but now if we'll save we can see on the bottom we have 2024 gold sponsors right to modify the order, we can modify this page again. 
and drag them up. We can actually collapse all of them. There's a button called collapse all. Is it? No. There you go. So on the top, collapse all. Now we can go into this mode where we can collapse them all, find our 2024 gold sponsors, move them where 2023 gold sponsors are, remove 2023 gold sponsors, save it, go to our homepage, and now we can see 2024 gold sponsors. As you can see, this title makes a lot of difference because if you have gold sponsors and gold sponsors from the last two mm -hmm. years, uh, it, it makes, so I kind of come up with this uh, no one cares if it's 2024 gold sponsors, but for us, when we edit the content, it makes a lot of difference. Then you would need to go to sponsors and uh, do the same process here, right? So remove, because the order is different, all you need to do is add entity reference at 2024 gold sponsors okay. here. And yeah, the order, again, order is purely for me making sure it's visually pleasing. If platform and catalyst are a bit longer, uh, I would put them on the bottom. And if more salsa and aqua a bit more higher, then I'll put them on the uh, on the front page here. So apart from that, I think you should be all right. Uh, that's kind of a nutshell of how to create the conference.